What do you see here? Can you see something recognizable? Maybe birds? This is what I saw, until one day I asked myself a question that, that led me to see the sky in this way. During this talk, I will explain how the idea of making visible the hidden beauty of bird flights came up and how this has changed my life. I grew up in El Prat de Llobregat, a city located near Nelda next to Barcelona. This area is surrounded by urban infrastructures such as the airport and the port of Barcelona. However, it still preserves wetland of great natural interest, doing large parts of the importance of this area as it passes for migratory birds. My grandfather used to go out every morning for a walk in this landscape, and he would write down all the birds he saw. From time to time, he used to take me with him. By doing so, I discovered many different species of each one had a particular type of call and flight that make them recognizable. This exploration triggered me a passion for NATO that has been with me ever since. I graduated geology, but I was dedicated myself professionally to my great passion, photography. I worked as a photographer assistant until I created my own retouching studio. Fortunately, lack of work was never a problem, but the growing frustration I feel working with other auto photographs surely was. Over the years, my desire to make my own photographic project grew but it can be difficult to know what to talk about or how to do it. It took me several years to figure out that I had been wanting to express something. It would have to be something that made me unique and that would allow me to share my knowledge and passion with others. With these ideas in mind, I realized that if anything makes me particular among my friends, it would make passion of looking at the sky or while hiking, noticing animal treasures. And to be honest, they dropping stool. Observing one of these tracks, I asked myself the question that would be the seed of my project. What kind of trace will birds live in the sky if this was possible? It was then, more than eight years ago, that I first visualized the mysterious lines that were drawn in the sky by each bird flight. Why not make it them visible? Now that my project was starting to take off, I have some doubts. Has anyone done it before? The truth is that I didn't think anything about it. And how could I technically carry out this project? After a research process, I conclude that the way to achieve it will be to take many photos per second to overlap them into one image. The most similar reference I found was Etienne Jules Marais' chronophotography from 19th century. To obtain the images he wanted, he had to take photographs against a black background and his technique consists in exposing the same negative multiple times on consecutive occasions. This technical solution did not work for me as I wanted to take the images outdoors. I had to figure out a technique to make it possible. Fortunately, the technological advances made since the 19th century allowed me to find a way to blend frames to overlap birds without altering the background, and also to save myself from chasing bird carrying Marais' photographic rifle. The big difference between classical chronophotography and my representation is that the first was intended to be a study of the movement of individuals. In each frame, a different position of the body was shown, and therefore an anatomical description of the movement was obtained. However, my aim was not to create individual images as descriptive as the position of the bird's body at each stage of the flight, but to show the flight as entity in itself, as a continuum. I wanted to reveal the aspect of pure movement. Attaining the perception of time, and with the sky as a canvas, it will be the birds that, through their choreography, will reveal the hidden drawing of their flights. That's why I had to make more photographs per second with the purpose that between each frame, images will overlap until the shape of the body was lost, making it unrecognizable. The resulting organic shape will let the multiple readings and interpretation depending on the observer. The conclusion was as follows. To capture such images, I will need to take pictures, but rather than to shoot video sequences in slow motion using high-resolution film cameras. 
after years of research and some preliminary tests, and finally found my desired project, Ornithographies. Two more years passed before I started to fully develop ornithorphics by investing time and resources to obtain images that would give me enough confidence to publish them. It was a fascinating time in which every time I captured a new flight, I saw a totally new shape. Thanks to my previous acknowledgement of ornithology, I was able to know what kinds of flight different birds could make, and perhaps most important, when and where to find them. This is why a large part of the project is based in Barcelona, as this is what I live and what I best know how to locate these species. In general, the birds I have recorded are not exotic animals from our faraway countries. There are usual common species in areas near to where I live, as near as the roof of my own house in some cases. This research led me to want to capture on one of the nature's most spectacular events, migrations. There are several very specific points in our planet where big migrations take place, forming large flocks of birds impossible to see in other circumstances. Tarifa, in the extreme sur of the Iberian Peninsula, is one of these points. During the month of August, large flocks of storks and blank kites gather to across the leader more than 10 kilometers of the Strait of Gibraltar that separates Europe from Africa. I started planting this tree months in advance with the intention of bringing the days with the higher concentration of birds and the best conditions. But not everything always goes as planned. On the very day of arrival, the wind began to blow so hard that it raised fog over the sea, preventing the birds from seeing Africa continent and therefore stopping the migration. In the first date, I felt a great deal of frustration. Walking with nature is not easy, but with the right information and passage, you can theoretically get results. The problem was that I didn't have much time left to spend in that area and I still had nothing at all. The mental images I met before leaving my house seemed very far away and the weather was not getting any better. During the year of work on this project, I have often faced frustration, but I have learned that we can use this lack of control, this serendipity, to our advantage by adapting that we had not anticipated. Only in this way, we can obtain results that we have never imagined be possible beforehand. In this sense, my experience in Tarifa was paradigmatic. Adversity led me to discover that in some fields a few kilometers away, hundreds of red kites had gathered, perched on the run, waiting for better conditions to cross. Every morning, they would rise with the wind to see if the conditions were any better, and during these few moments, they honored their names. For they only move up and down, up and down, with virtually no progress from the point they were until they decided decide to leave. This is the mission I got. If I had not been open to everything that could happen, I would never have thought that a bird like this could make such a unique flight. The next piece I want to share with you is a bird that has one of the most popular flights. Due to the flow of the wave of the spectacular clouds they form. In fact, it's such a peculiar type of flight that he has earned a name of, it, of its own, murmurations. Over the last few years, starling flocks have become, became one of the main working objects. From the beginning of the project, one 
one of the flights I had planned to capture, but it took me years before I could understand their habits and therefore know where and when to find them. I discovered that the starling flocks together during the winter and during the day they go in small groups to feed in fields. It's only at dusk that these groups go to common areas to sleep and feel protected. It is at this time that they form these impressive groups. However, it's not enough for them to do their famous dances. It's necessary that at the precise moment when they arrive at the area where they will be spending the night, peregrine falcons appear with the intention of attacking them. Now is when the starlings will do their dance in order to confuse the predator. We could say that the falcon models the femoral sculpture. So in conclusion, the final image is due to the interaction between these two species, and the result is this one. Going back to the history of this project, five years ago, once I had a set of images that I was proud of, I found the strength to finally publish Ornithorphis. Then something wonderful happened. From a single digital publication began a chain of publications that made them appear in a few months in newspapers from all over Europe like The Guardian and even in international publications like CNN or Wired among many others. And then, finally, a childhood dream come true, to publish a full article in the international print edition of National Geographic. Today, my work has transcended the field of photography, and synergies have been generated with other disciplines, such as architecture, biology, biomimic, dance, music, as shown in the piece played through this video composed by Christina Dutton, inspired by the images of the vlogs that you have seen before. Currently, I'm fully dedicated to ornithorphies, creating new images, working on the publication of a book, and on research for future projects. This has been the history of ornithorphies, but beyond this is a history of how people can find their vocation in a process that can last for years and eventually living from our own projects. I believe that we all have the right to make a living doing whatever we are passionate about. Ornithography does not contain explicit conservationist message, but its final objective, hidden like the sacred ways formed by the birds in the sky, is to show the hidden beauty of nature in order to promote the admiration and desire to seek its conservation. Now, I have a five-year-old daughter, and I'm proud to be able to take her to Delta and show her the same species that my grandfather discovered me in his day. Thank you, Grandpa, for those walks. I hope that we have the ability as a species to reduce your human footprint on the planet, and that we can continue passing on to our future generations to love for the natural treasures around us. Thank you very much for your attention, and remember to stop and look at the sky from time to time because we could possibly be missing a gift from nature.